So we'll start with this uh, normal and shear stress on the plane. So in this, uh, in this slide, you have, uh, so this is a soil element. And this soil element is subjected to a combination of normal and shear stresses. So yeah, on the horizontal plane, the top horizontal plane, you have this uh, vertical downward compressive stress, sigma y, and you have shear stress, tau xy. In vertical plane, you have compressive normal stress sigma x and then shear stress tau xy. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, sign convention we use in geotechnical engineering. So sign convention, this is different from uh, structural mechanics, so sign convention. First for normal stresses, for this compressive or tension force, for normal stress, in, in soil mechanics or in geotechnical engineering, we uh, consider compressive force to be positive. So positive is for compression. It's a compressive force or compressive uh, stress. And negative is uh, for tension. We consider tension to be negative. So this is actually opposite of uh, what, we, what you're used to in structural mechanics. Uh, one simple reason is uh, most of the time uh, in geotechnical engineering, soils are under a compressive uh, state. So it's good, soils are good to sustain compression, but not good uh, uh, to sustain any tension. In terms of the, so the, this is normal stress. If you look at this uh, diagram, this picture here, so both sigma y and the sigma x are positive because they are compressing this soil element. So by our comp uh, sign convention, this is compressive stress. And then the shear stress, for shear stress, the sign convention, uh, so we can shear stress. So we consider positive shear stress to produce counterclockwise rotation. Counterclockwise rotation. This is, oops. If you look at this, again, this soil element here uh, for this uh, horizontal plane, DC plane, this shear stress tau xy, it creates a clockwise rotation. So by our sign convention, this is a negative shear stress. And then this tau xy on the vertical plane, CB, it produces a counterclockwise rotation. And this by our sign convention is negative shear stress. So now let's look at a particular plane EF here. So now we, uh, we, we have the sign convention. So the next we're going to determine the shear and the normal stress on this particular plane EF that is at an angle theta from the horizontal axis. The right hand side here, that's a free body diagram of this EF plane. Our goal is to find sigma n, that's a normal stress, and tau n, that's a shear stress on this plane. And the way to do that is basically use simple equilibrium. So you sum out the forces in the x direction, that equals to zero in equilibrium, and then sum of all forces in y direction equals to zero in equilibrium. And then you just solve for sigma n and tau n using uh, this applied shear and normal stresses. So this is what you're going to get. The first equation, equation one, is the equation of uh, for this normal stress a sigma n. So on this uh, on the right hand side, you see this is applied normal stresses, and that's your shear stress. So one thing I want to point out here, this angle theta in your equation, when you want to use this e equation to calculate normal and shear stress. Uh, you have to be careful what theta value you are using. So by definition, so this theta is the angle uh, counterclockwise from horizontal direction. So it's actually this direction. Okay. So let's say if you're given another plane and you want to calculate the normal and shear stress on this plane here, so on the left hand side, the theta you're going to use is this angle that's 
counterclockwise, counterclockwise from horizontal axis. So that's your theta value. Okay. So again, if you want to plug in uh, numbers to this equation, just be careful what uh, theta you're plugging in. And the second equation, equation two here, that's the equation for shear stress or tangential stress tau n. And there's a special plane. Um, there's a special case if on a given plane, the shear stress tau n is zero. So this plane basically has only normal stress. So that's what we call principal plane. Principal plane. And if you set tau n equals to zero in equation two, you can solve for the angle theta. So that's what's shown on this uh, slide here. So this first equation is obtained by setting tau n from that equation two to zero. So you can solve the angle of this principal plane. And there are two solutions to this theta. So you're going to get two normal stresses on these two planes. And these are what we call principal stresses. And the larger one of these two is called major principal stress, we call sigma one. And the smaller one is called minor principal stress, uh, we call sigma three here. So basically again, this is obtained by setting uh, tau n equals to zero and solve for theta. And you plug in theta into uh, this first equation to get no principal stresses. Okay. So that's major and minor principal stresses. Uh, so then uh, if you take equations one and two of the normal and shear stress, you take the square of these two equations and add them up, you actually end up with this expression here. Uh, if you look closely to this equation, it's actually an equation to a circle. So this is the equation of the circle. If you plot this equation in normal versus shear stress plot. So if you plot shear, normal stress in the horizontal axis and shear stress in the vertical axis, so this is actually an equation of a circle. And this is what we call Moore's circle of stress. And the center of this Moore's circle of stress is given right here. So that's the location of the center. It's on the horizontal axis. And then the radius of the Mohr circle is basically the square root of the right-hand side. So you have the radius of the Mohr circle. So Mohr circle basically represents the state of a stress at a point in the soil mass along any directions. Uh, to construct a Mohr circle, uh, there are two scenarios, two cases. The first case is the soil element is subjected to uh, normal and shear stresses on two orthogonal planes. So shown right here, oops. So you have normal and shear stress on two orthogonal planes. And that basically means you have two points M and N here on this Mohr circle. So you can construct your Mohr circle to know the, the diameter and the center. And the second scenario is a special case where you know the principal stresses. Uh, so you know the, for this, for this case, for instance, you know the vertical uh, major principal stress and the horizontal minor principal stress. So that basically means you know these two points, uh, sigma one and sigma three on the Mohr circle. They are on the horizontal axis where tau is zero. And then you can construct your Mohr circle uh, this way if you know sigma one and sigma three here. So if you look, uh, as I mentioned, um, if you look, about, look back how we uh, get to this more circle of stress equation, we're basically using uh, equilibrium principles and we're solving normal and shear stress along a particular plane theta. So if you vary this value of theta, you get a different combination of normal and shear stress. So basically you are at a different point on this more circle. As I mentioned, Mohr circle represents the state of stress at a point along any given plane in the soil mass. And the other thing you can get from Mohr circle is the values of principal stresses and the, the direction of principal planes. For principal stress, by definition, 
these are normal stresses on the plane where shear stress is zero. If you look at the Mohr circle, the intersection of Mohr circle with the horizontal axis, there are two points. And both of these two points uh, have zero shear stress, so y value is zero. And the larger one is called the major principal stress. And the smaller one is minor principal stress. And the third thing uh, you can do with more circle, uh, more circle is you can find the normal and shear stress on any plane. And that's a pole method we're going to talk about uh, next. But there's a, a, another option you can uh, you, you, you can choose to calculate normal and shear stress. That is um, by using equations one and two. So this is uh, equation one and two. So you can always use uh, these two equations to find the normal and shear stress on a plane theta. So you just need to pay attention to what theta value you plug in. But what I'm going to focus on next is this pole method. So this pole method is a graphical method. It uses the Mohr circle to actually find these uh, normal and shear stresses on any plane. For the pole method, there are two steps here. Uh, the first step is to, hold on. can you see the, uh, the slide of the poll method? Okay, All right. I think there's a glitch there. Um, so this slide shows the poll method and I'm going to use uh, a couple of examples to illustrate this poll method. But mainly there are two steps involved. The first step is you locate the poll on a more circle. For each more circle, there's only one pole. So you have only one pole. The first step is to locate this pole on your more circle. And the way to do that, um, so again, I'm going to use example to go over this step, but basically you're going to draw a line from a known, known point on the more circle. And this line is parallel to the plane on which this stress acts. And the intersection of this line with the Mohr circle is the pole. So this is step one. The next step is to use this pole to find stresses on any plane, to find the normal and shear stresses on any plane. And the way to do that is from this pole, you draw a line parallel to the plane of interest. And the intersection of the line with Mohr circle gives you the normal and shear stress on that plane. 